today I have a total body pregnancy friendly Pilates workout for you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nicole. I'm a STOT trained Pilates instructor as well as a pregnancy and postpartum corrective exercise specialist. So you are in good hands, but that being said, I'm not there in the room with you and every pregnancy is different. So you are going to listen to your doctor's advice over anything I say in this class and you're going to listen to your body as you go throughout this workout. In particular, I want you to notice how you are managing pressure and what it feels like as we go through class. Are you feeling pressure down on your pelvic floor? Are you feeling or seeing bulging or pressure out along the midline here where a diastasis can form? If you are feeling or seeing that pressure, then it's a sign you need to back off. We can absolutely challenge ourselves with workouts during pregnancy, but we don't want to do that at the cost of worsening pelvic floor issues or diastasis recti. So I will be cueing pelvic floor engagement, core engagement through diaphragmatic breath all throughout this class. At any point, if you feel like you're no longer able to maintain that control through the pelvic floor and the core, that is a sign that you should dial it down. Now, with all this said, yes, this is a prenatal Pilates class, but you don't have to be pregnant to do it. We got a lot of good stuff in here, a lot of good work. So you can do this whether or not you are pregnant. It will still be a great class. I will cue as if you are pregnant though. No props are needed today. We're gonna go body weight only. However, we'll do a good chunk of class at the beginning kneeling. So if you want a blanket or a towel down just for a little extra comfort for your knees, that is an option. Also, if you wanna advance this class, you could wear ankle weights and wrist weights or hold on to light hand weights for part of it. So if you do wanna take that advancement, you can have ankle, wrist weights, hand weights on hand. One other option. So we are going to come down to our forearms in a forearm tabletop position at one point. Depending on how far along into your pregnancy you are, this may be an uncomfortable position. If it is, I would recommend having two yoga blocks that you can elevate your hands on instead of coming down to your forearms. The forearm part is to give our wrists a break and a nice way to give your wrists a break without getting down low is to have yoga blocks you can kind of wrap your hands around so another option for modifying there um, but you could do this without any of those as well I'm not going to use added weights or yoga blocks today just have my blanket all right so that is a lot of talking so why don't we get into class we're going to start in a cross-legged position for our warm-up so you wanna, if this is uncomfortable, you can elevate your hips by sitting on a pillow or a yoga block. And we're going to start with some breath work, focusing on lateral expansion of the rib cage. So I want you to bring your hands to the sides of your ribs. I like to flip my palms. This is a more comfortable position for my shoulders, but you can do this as well. And we're just going to breathe on the inhale. I want you to focus on trying to expand your rib cage into your hands, okay? So we inhale through the nose. Can you expand that rib cage laterally into your hands? Might be a very small movement and that's fine. Exhale out through the mouth. Ribs can move back in and down gently. There's a lift of the pelvic floor, engage with the abdominal wall. Inhale through the nose, relax the pelvic floor, expand that rib cage into your hands, even if it's a tiny, tiny, tiny expansion. And exhale slowly out through the mouth. Ribs move in and down, abdominal wall engagement, little lift of the pelvic floor, continue to breathe like that. So as we progress in our pregnancy, the rib cage gets lifted kind of up and out. So getting this lateral movement and movement in the back of the rib cage becomes increasingly difficult. But we wanna to try to maintain a little bit of movement three-dimensionally through the rib cage as much as we can and as far into our pregnancy as possible. If we can no longer expand the rib cage laterally and into our back, and it all pushes out here and we get that pressure on the midline that we wanna avoid as long as possible. One more breath in and out. And now let's focus on mid-back expansion on the inhale. So I want you to bring your fingertips forward. I want you to knob the chin and I want you to walk the hands forward, rounding. Now, depending on how far into your pregnancy you are, you may not be able to walk very far at all. I'm a little earlier, I'm just at 16 weeks today. So I'm gonna walk it out far. I, I don't have much of a belly in the way just yet. It's, it's coming. <laughs> so now on the inhale, I want you to focus on expanding into your back. And in this rounded position, it just helps us Feel that mid-back expansion. Same deal, exhale out through the mouth. Little lift to the pelvic floor, engage to the abdominal wall. Inhale, direct that breath into your mid-back. 
Don't be frustrated if you are like, I cannot expand my ribs into the back. If you are far along into your pregnancy, it does get tough to do that. One more breath here. Inhale, expand into the mid-back. Exhale it out. And then we're just going to walk our hands back in. We're going to sit up nice and tall. I want you to bring your hands to the side, palms face forward. And we're just going to snow angel. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead and down. So we're just mobilizing through the shoulder joint. Sweep them up and out. And I want you to notice, are you feeling tight through the front of your shoulders and your chest and your pecs? Are the shoulders wanting to round forward? Really think open through the chest. Oh, I see a spider. Hold on. Let me just, whoop, little flick. There we go. Yep. Yep. Keep walking that way. <laughs> I hate spiders. Like my biggest fear. <laughs> Give me one more sweep like this. Up, down, and then I want you to tent the fingertips. Now mirroring me, we can start with the right side. I want you to sweep the arm forward and up. And as you do, I want you to rotate open through the right a little bit. Just a little rotation. That rotation is coming from the mid spine and reverse it. Take it over to the other side. Arm sweep forward up, rotate open gently in that direction and continue to move like that. And you'll sweep it open, little rotation in that direction and down. So we're not over rotating the neck. I really want you to think, can you get that rotation, that small rotation from your mid spine? Oh, I'm feeling stiff this morning. So this feels so good. Just give me one more each side. Sweep it up, lower it down. And then from here, I want you to take your hands in front. We're gonna walk them forward. I'm just gonna to turn to the side. You might want to as well, depending on the direction of your mat. And we're gonna to come to a tabletop position, but I want you to keep your knees wide. So the feet are together, knees are wide, hands under shoulders, and just give me a little rock back and forward, opening up through the hips a little bit. When you rock forward, you can bring the hips farther forward than the knees to get a little opening through the front of the hips. I like to shift forward on the exhale. So I have that connection to my abdominals and back twice more, rock it forward, reach the tailbone back one more time, rock it forward, take it back. And then I want you to come up through a center tabletop and bring your knees into hips distance apart. So we got knees under hips, hands under shoulder or wrists under shoulders and spread out through those hands. So you have weight in your fingertips. It's not all just dumping into the wrist. Now we have a neutral spine length through the back of the neck. And from here, I want you to think of wrapping your arms back so that the creases of your elbows are pointing forward. And then from here, I want you to take your left leg and I want you to extend it back. Toes can tuck under. Okay. So we got right knee down, left leg long. From here, we're going to go into a little tricep dip. So you're going to bend the elbows and then you're going to straighten them. Now we're maintaining length through the spine as we do this. So as you bend the elbows, you're not rounding forward and dipping the head. You maintain neutral spine, so it's more like a seesaw movement. Little bend to the elbows, press. Now we wanna maintain abdominal gauge engagement here. So as we move, I want you to think inhale, you have that gentle expansion through the rib cage. You can kind of relax through your belly a little bit. You can relax through the pelvic floor. And then on the exhale, you think lift to the pelvic floor, engage through that abdominal wall, kind of like you're giving your baby a hug. So we're waking up the triceps here. We got a lot of tricep work coming up in this opening series. This opening series, we got triceps, we got deep core work, and we got glutes. Give me two more. Last time, pause with your arms straight. Make sure you're not locked out through the elbows though. And I want you to tuck the right toes under if they're not already. So all 10 toes tucked under. We're gonna inhale to prepare as you exhale. Same breath I was talking about, out through the mouth lift to the pelvic floor, engage to the abdominal wall, kind of give in the baby a hug. And then you're just going to lift that right knee to a two inch hover. And as you inhale, you're going to lower it back down to the mat. Exhale, we lift to the sprinting bear plank position. <sighs> inhale, we lower. Now, if this is a little too much, you're gonna bring both knees in, okay? So instead of having one leg extended, both knees are gonna be under the hips and you're gonna lift and lower from there. It's going to give your core a little more support. 
but if you're able to, we have that one leg extended, lifting and lowering. Now there's no rush. You are moving with your breath, okay? So you initiate the exhale. Don't lift the knee up until you feel the support, your pelvic floor and your core. Once you're in that supported position, then lift the knee up and lower it down. Again, as we do this, we are monitoring for pressure. If you're feeling pressure down on your pelvic floor, or you're seeing bulging from the midline or feel that pressure out, it's sign to back it up. Now, next time you lift up into this sprinting bear position, you are going to hold with that knee at a hover and go back to those tricep dips. Little dip and press for eight, seven, six, five, stay open through the chest, Four, maintain that abdominal engagement. Three, two, last time, lower the knee down to the mat, and I want you to come down to forearms. We are keeping that left leg straight. You're gonna untuck the toes, stay gently pointed through that left ankle, and on an exhale, you're going to lift the leg up and lower, exhale leg kicks up and lower. Now I want you to think of reaching long through the leg and then up. Exhale, feel the brace of your core, reach long through the leg, fire through the glutes to lift it up. Now I want you to notice as that leg lifts up, is the knee bending? Are you kind of doing a little kick? I don't want that. So I want you to think engage through the quads, through the top of your thigh, that's gonna hold the leg straight, reach it long, fire through the base of the seat, through your glutes to lift the leg. Now, as I mentioned at the start of class, if doing this on forearms is uncomfortable, you have the option here to instead bring your hands to yoga blocks, or you could just stay on straight arms, but I do want us to get this little wrist break. Lift and lower. Now, we're going to keep the lift and lower going, but we're going to change the direction of it. We're going to do it at a diagonal. In four, hold your leg at a hover. In three, Two, next time that leg lifts up, I want you to pause. Now as we lower, it's gonna go back across to the right. Okay, so you're gonna lower, tap that left foot over to the right. Exhale, lift it back up, fire into the glutes. Inhale, down at a diagonal, and up. Down to the right, exhale it up. We're maintaining a neutral spine here, and we're maintaining length through the back of the neck. So don't let your head hang heavy. Your gaze shouldn't be at your feet. It's at the mat in between your forearms. Speaking of forearms, we're pressing the mat away, staying stable through the shoulders. And four, we're gonna switch this up. Three, we're gonna take it out to the left. Two, next time that leg lifts up, pause. Now we're not gonna tap, or we are gonna tap it to the floor, but we're gonna take it in the opposite direction. So sweep it out to the left and down, tap the floor, and up. Out to the left, tap the floor, bring it up. Down, sweep it up. Now as it goes out to the left, don't counter it by dumping into your right hip. So we're trying to keep the right hip, Stacked over the right knee, it is a challenge for stability through that right hip. So it's not just our left leg working. Now we're gonna put the movements together, kind of making a rainbow shape with the leg. It'll tap to the left, sweep up and over and tap to the right. In three, make it bigger. In two, last time like this, let's make it bigger. Foot taps to the left, lift it up over to the right. So it's like a rainbow shape up and over. Now as the leg kicks up, you don't arch into your lower back. So think exhale, brace through the core, lift the leg up and over. Almost through with this tabletop series. Well, we'll get a little break before we do it on the other side. We're going to hold that leg lifted in four, three, Two, one, bring that leg to a hover, pause. I want you to bend the knee, flex through the foot so you're in a donkey kick position. Give me little pulses to finish up. 
up. So it's like you're trying to stamp your foot through the ceiling. As you pulse it up, don't arch into your lower back. Maintain that abdominal control. Push the mat away, stable through the shoulders. Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, knees down in two, one. Bring both knees down, bum to your heels, come up to a kneeling position. Woo. All right, so we're gonna do a little chest opening here, okay? And this is time where if you do have light hand weights and you wanna grab them, you can. I want you to reach your arms forward, make sure you're sitting up tall, and we're just gonna row those elbows back, and you're gonna reach them forward. Now, as you row the elbows back, focus on drawing your shoulder blades together, retracting them, but without moving your spine. So we're not arching forward like this. We just draw the shoulder blades in. So those shoulder blades are gliding across our back. If it's uncomfortable kneeling, you can always elevate your hips, sit on a pillow or a block. So we're gonna keep this going. We're just gonna add in a kick back of the arms. So you're gonna row the elbows back. Now palms go down, sweep, kick them back. Bring them up, reach them forward. Elbows, kick through the forearms and reverse. Open through the chest. So even if you're doing this unweighted, you will start to feel a little burn through the arms, through the shoulders, especially because we're doing this after all that tabletop work where our shoulders really had to work to support us. Next time you kick those arms back, hold them straight in this position, palms face behind you, and it's a little straight arm pulse, up and back, up and back. Now I want you to notice as you kick up and back, are you rolling the head of your shoulder forward? I don't want that. So think broad across the collarbone, stay really open there. So the push back, you're gonna feel it more in your lats in this kind of armpit area than you do with that forward motion of the shoulders. We're gonna hold the arms back. We're gonna squeeze them in together as if we could touch our thumbs, but by no means do the thumbs actually have to touch behind your back. Four, in three, two, hold the arms back, a little squeeze in, 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 in. Now notice is all this chest opening causing your head to want to dip forward. Think of sliding the chin gently back, keep the neck aligned with the rest of your spine. We have a little feel good movement up next, and then we're gonna start this whole sequence from the top. In four, you pause in three, two, one. I want you to hold with the arms facing behind you, but I want you to flip the palms forward, and don't just flip the forearms. I want you to think of rotating the arm from the shoulder joint really opening up here. Now from this open position, we're going to let the shoulders round forward. You're gonna nod the chin. So we're gonna round forward a little bit through that upper spine and you can rotate palms face behind you and you can kind of let them drop. And now inhale, let's open it back up to that starting position, rotate palms face forward. Exhale, let the shoulders round forward. You can nod the chin, you can kind of slump forward a little bit. And then inhale, we open it up. You stack the spine up tall, open through the chest, palms face forward. Exhale, let them relax and round forward. Inhale, open it up. Twice more. Last time. Exhale it out, kind of slump it forward. <laughs> Inhale, open it up, pause here. We're open through the chest. It's okay if you have a little extension through the spine. Palms are facing forward. Can you lift those arms up just a little higher? One breath in, let it go. And now we're gonna start that tabletop series from the top. So I want you to spread out through the hands. Hands come under shoulders, knees are under hips, hips distance apart. Now you're gonna take your right leg and you're going to reach it long, toes are tucked under. Wrap the arms back so the creases of your elbows point forward and we're gonna go into those tricep dips. So you bend the elbows, press. Elbows go back towards your legs, not out to the side. So you really gotta make sure you've wrapped the arms back so the creases point forward. That way we really get the triceps. 
Now we're maintaining neutral spine here so you don't let the head hang and you don't let an excessive arch to the lower back develop, which can be easier said than done, especially as you progress in your pregnancy and things start to get heavier in the front. But I want you to think, go back to that breath anytime you need it. Well, not anytime you need it, all throughout class, hopefully. <laughs> as you exhale, you think lift to the pelvic floor, little hug of the baby little engagement to the abdominal wall. That cue, hug the baby, it is helpful. It gives you a good visual, but it's just so weird for me to say because I'm still kind of early in my pregnancy. And I said this in the last class I shared, but it just like hasn't clicked that there's actually a baby in there yet. <laughs> so it seems so weird to me. I mean, I know there is one, but I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> Give me four, three, Two, one, pause with your arms straight, tuck the left toes under as well. Inhale here to prepare, exhale, feel that connection to your deep core, lift to the pelvic floor, gentle brace to the abdominal wall, lift that left knee up to a two inch hover. And then you can lower it back down on the inhale. Exhale, first feel the support of your pelvic floor and abdominal muscles. Once you have that support, that brace, you lift up and keep moving like that. So it's slow, I don't care how many reps you get in. If you're not able to maintain that abdominal brace and that gentle pelvic floor lift, when you come into this position, try it with both knees bent, that's a little easier. Like I said at the start of class, of course we wanna challenge ourselves in these classes, but not at the cost of worsening pelvic floor issues or diastasis recti. So we wanna stay within the movements that we can control. Now, next time you lift up into that sprinting bear position, you are going to hold with that knee at a hover and we go back to the tricep dips. If this is too much though, you put that knee right back down, okay? Give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lower the knee down, and we're gonna untuck the toes and come to forearms, or if it's more comfortable, you can elevate your hands on yoga blocks to give yourself that wrist break. Okay, so the hips are level to the floor. We're reaching long through that right leg, and on an exhale, we lift it up, firing through the glutes, and lower. Exhale, lift, and lower. Again, if that knee is bending in, your hamstrings are kind of taking over, and it's not that the hamstrings aren't working at all on this, but we wanna get glutes to fire, okay? So to inhibit the hamstrings, think of squeezing the quad, the top of your thigh, that's gonna hold the leg straight and it's gonna allow our glutes to contract and we'll get that powerful contraction as the leg lifts up. As the leg kicks up, we don't counter it by arching into the lower back. So think exhale, brace to the core, leg lifts. So we've been lifting and lowering parallel. We're gonna keep the lift and lower go going, but we're gonna take it into a diagonal across to the left and up in four, pause at the top, in three, two, next time the leg lifts up, pause it at the top. Now you're gonna take it down and across to the left, little diagonal, exhale it up, down and across, whoo, and up, keep holding that leg straight. Now as you do this, I want you to notice, are you crunching into one side of your waist? If you are, it's probably the left side waist. Think of leveling out through the hips. So equal length through both sides of the waist, we are not dumping our weight into the supporting left side. We're trying to keep the left hip stacked over the left knee as best we can. A little test. Are you able to take the left hand away and maintain the movement? If not, it might mean you have too much weight shifted over into that side. In four, we're gonna take the leg over to the right instead. Three, 
two. Last time, pause at the top, and now let's take it in the other direction. So it's gonna sweep down, taps the floor to the right, and up. Out to the right, and up. So this is where, as it goes to the right, it can get tempting to lean to the left. And sorry, I just gotta move so I don't hit my couch. So this is where I really think a little extra weight in the right forearm. We are almost done with tabletop work. We're gonna make this bigger. We're gonna go side to side, that little rainbow shape in three, two. Let's make it bigger so it taps to the right, comes up and over to the left, up and over. You can do it, you have one final variation to get through, okay? And then we're done with our tabletop work. Maintain that breath and that abdominal control. Give me four. Three. Two. One. Bring the leg up to a hover at center, bend the knee, flex through the heel. You're in a donkey kick position. Brace through the core, little donkey kick, pulses. Kick the foot up and up. You squeeze into the glutes as you do this. Length through the back of the neck. You're here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Knee comes down. Walk those hands in, sit your bum on your heels, or if it's more comfortable, you can sit on a pillow to elevate them. Woo, let's do that little arm work, that little chest opening work. One last time. So reach the arms forward, palms face down. It's a wide row, elbows draw back. Reach them forward. So yes, the elbows are drawing back, but we're really focusing in on the retraction of the shoulder blades. They draw in towards each other. So after this, we'll move into some side body work. Shoulders are gonna have to do a little more work. Let's turn this into our combo, okay? So you're gonna row back, kick, sweep, palms face back. Bring it forward, reach it forward. Elbows back, rotate, sweep the arms back. Staying open through the chest. So this chest opening stuff is so important for everyone, whether or not you're pregnant, because we tend to be rounded forward in a seated position a lot of our day, especially if you have a desk job. But if you're pregnant and then if you breastfeed, we got a lot of weight in the front. And so we tend to start to round forward. So chest opening work is so important. Next time you kick those arms back, hold them back. It's a little pulse. Back and up, back and up. Maintain length through the spine, so we're sitting up tall. In four, pulse in, in three, in two, one. Now squeeze them in, in, keep going. I just gotta silence my phone, sorry, it's ringing. In, in. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> In four, you hold. In three, two, hold those arms back, and now we're gonna rotate palms forward. And again, don't just flip the palms. Think of the rotating as coming from your shoulder joint. The whole arm flips forward. So now palms facing forward, we're gonna go into that feel good move as you exhale. Let the shoulders slump forward, palms will face back. You can round forward. And then inhale, open it up, rotate open peeling open across the chest, palms face forward, exhale, round it. So you can almost think of this as a gentle cat cow. When you open up, you can come through neutral and find a little spinal extension. I want this to feel good. Twice more. Last time. Open it up, let's hold on the open. Chest is open, 
Gaze might be slightly up. Lift those arms up and back a little bit. Here for three, two, one. Whoo! All right, we're gonna come into some side body work up next. I'm gonna move my blanket off to the side. You don't have to though, you can continue to use it. So you're going to mirror me. Let's come down on our right forearm. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna come down on our right forearm, so you're mirroring me. And I want you to stack your knees, I want them bent, and I want them forward a little bit. Not all the way forward so that your hip is in a 90 degree angle, but kind of like this so the heel is in line with your bum. Now we are going to focus in on the hips here, but that does not mean our obliques are not working, it doesn't mean our shoulder isn't working. So as for the shoulder, I want you to think of pressing the mat away so you're like this, we're not down here shoulder to ear. And I want you to think of lifting the side body away from the floor. So we have this really active area here, okay? And now we're going to press the heels together and we're gonna start with a clamshell of that top leg so you're rotating and peeling it open. Now we're rotating the leg within the hip joint, we are not moving the actual hips. So what do I mean by that? It means that when the leg lifts open, we're not rocking back. We are keeping this left hip stacked directly above the right, getting into those deep hip rotators to open up. So really squeeze as you open. Be intentional about it. Now, if you are advanced, you can always add in a resistance band loop to this, but we're gonna spice it up with just our body weight coming up. Exhale. Now we'll do a little bit of work propped up on our forearm like this, and then we will lay all the way down, okay? So if this shoulder starts talking to you, I know we've showed our shoulders a lot of love already in this class. A little more to go, okay? You got this. Now we're gonna keep this clamshell going, but we're gonna get the bottom leg involved. So we're gonna lift the bottom heel off of the mat as we clamshell open, keep the bottom knee on the ground, okay? So as you exhale, we're gonna clamshell open, you're gonna lift that heel up. So now we're externally rotating this bottom hip joint, woo! So suddenly bottom right hip has to work as well. So we open and close. Now we are creating our own resistance within our body. So I want you to push the heels together, okay? If you really push one heel down, the other up into each other, this is a challenging move. Adding in equipment is awesome. Resistance bands, ankle weights, all of that good stuff. But we can do so much just within our own body weight. Don't worry if the heel isn't getting too high off the floor. In four, you're gonna hold everything lifted. Three, two, you're gonna lift everything up. You're gonna keep it lifted. Heels are pressing into each other. Go back to the clamshell of just the top leg. Keep that bottom heel lifted. Woo! Really press the heels in towards each other, okay? Give yourself that challenge. Can you give me eight, seven, six, five, four, we lower the shape in three, two, last time lower everything in down everything down and now instead of a clamshell we're going to do an abduction so we're not rotating within the hip joint it's just that straight lift up now as the leg lifts up we don't collapse into the bottom side body so you think lift supporting ourselves through the obliques and the shoulder now as you do this i want you to check in on alignment you may need to hop your hips back just a couple inches, which I do, because I want your knees and your elbow to kind of be in line with each other. The knee can be a little farther forward, but kind of in line with each other for this next part, okay? So just like we did with the clamshell, we're gonna get the bottom side of our body involved, lifting up into a modified side plank as we abduct this top leg. In four, three, two, one. So now as this top leg lifts, you're gonna bring your hips up and forward, coming into a modified side plank, lift up. Everything lowers. Exhale, feel the brace of the abdominals, the lift of the pelvic floor, then move it up. 
Inhale to lower down. So see how I'm sending my hips forward and up. So I'm open across the hip joint and then I send them back and down. So I'm flexed here. This way the spine is staying pretty neutral throughout it and we're not really side bending. Now, next time you lift up, we're just gonna do the abduction of the leg. So you're gonna hold in the side plank, lift and lower the top leg. It can be more like a pulse for eight, seven, Six, really squeeze into the bottom side. Five, four, three, you're off this bottom shoulder. Two, one, Woo! lower the hips down. Now we're gonna come all the way down on our right side. So I like to cradle my head in my hand. If it's more comfortable for you to reach your arm long like this, go for it. But this position holds my neck in better alignment. Okay, so we're gonna straighten out into one long line. Shoulders, hips, heels. One long line, you're gonna ground down through that bottom leg, reach long through the top, fingertips content in front of you, and we're gonna lift and lower the top leg. You're gonna to point to lift, you're gonna to flex to lower. Now at any point, if you are feeling like you need a little more support, a great way to modify is to take that bottom right leg and just hop it forward like six inches to a foot, okay? And that is gonna give you some help when it comes to core stability. So especially as we progress through this series, know that that is always an option. Now, when we were propped up on our forearm, we did a lot of movement within the hip joint. We did abduction, we did rotation, external rotation. So we're gonna try to invite back in some of that movement here. We're not gonna try to, we are. <laughs> Now, same deal, just because we're lying on our side doesn't mean we're collapsing into our side. So I want you to stay engaged to the bottom side obliques. As if you're lifting them gently away from the floor. In four, you're gonna hold the leg at a hover. In three, two, you're gonna hold the leg at a hover. Now, we're gonna find internal to external rotation. You're gonna keep the leg straight. The rotation is coming from here and the whole leg is gonna rotate in and then rotate out. It's small, it might be frustratingly small. Think about the head of your femur, the head of your thigh bone, just rotating like this within your hip joint, okay? So it stays parallel, it's just that tight rotation. Woo, might feel a little awkward, that's okay. So your top of the foot is kind of rotating down towards the floor, up slightly to the ceiling. Keep reaching long through the leg. When you really think about that length through the leg, it almost automatically gives you that lift and that engagement through the side body. Now we're gonna hold with the leg externally rotated. So that means top of the foot pointed slightly up in four, three, two. Next time you externally rotate or rotate out, I want you to hold here and we're gonna go back to the lift and lower but maintaining that external rotation. So it's kind of up and out in a diagonal and down. Point to lift, flex to lower. Keep the hips steady, leg moves within the hip joint. Maintain that external rotation. So you're thinking of wrapping that thigh outward without rocking through the hips. As the leg kicks up, don't collapse into your side body. And again, if you need support, hop that bottom right leg forward like six inches to a foot. Give me four. We're gonna maintain external rotation, three. In two, last kick up and down. Now I want you to lower it, maintain the external rotation, just bend the knee, point through the foot and bring it in. So it's on top of the bottom shin. So we are kind of in a tree pose position. Tent the fingertips on the floor in front of you. If they're not already, point through the bottom ankle as well. On an exhale, the whole shape lifts and lowers. So now bottom inner thigh has to work. Exhale, brace to the core, little lift of that whole shape. Does not have to be a big lift, okay? Because we are not collapsing into the top waist or we're not crunching into the top waist and collapsing into the bottom side body in order to get the leg up high, okay? We're gonna finish with a hold and then you're done on this side. You can do it.
Give me four, three, hold to finish, two, lift the whole shape up and just hold. We're externally rotating the top leg, bottom leg is reaching long, lift it through the side body, hold and breathe. Everything lowers, you're gonna bend the knees and stack them on top of each other in four, three, two, one, bend the knees, stack them on top of each other, and then you can use your left hand to help press you up. Oh, let's take a counter stretch. So first we'll stretch for this bottom right shoulder, sweep that right arm up and over. And then let's get the left outer hip, so I just want you to swing your feet around, and then side bend the other way. So now you get through here. Whew. All right, so we're gonna do that whole thing on the other side. <laughs> oh, all right, take a couple more breaths here. If you need to grab a sip of water, go for it. We're gonna do this whole side body series on the other side, and then we're gonna center off with just some quick modified push-up work, and then that's your class, okay? So we are getting there. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Mirror me, left forearm is down. Knees are bent, hopping forward a little bit, but not all the way to a 90 degree angle. Lifted through the side body, pressing the mat away, stable through the shoulders. Hips are stacked, and we're gonna start with that clamshell so the heels squeeze together. We open and close. The way Squeaky is sleeping is cracking me up. I might be in the way, but if you look, <laughs> with his little head on his paws. Him and Crouton are going crazy in the backyard, chasing each other around, so they are pooped. I was like, perfect, they'll be calm and chill while I film this class. I know it's fun as a viewer when they're crazy, but it is so distracting when I'm trying to teach and they're like jumping on me. Exhale, feel the abdominal engagement, open. So we really think of every exercise as a core exercise because it all comes back to breath. That exhale, lift the pelvic floor, brace the abdominal wall, open up through the top leg. So this is a challenging side body series. Prenatal workouts do not need to mean easy workouts. It's just you kind of want to pick and choose where you can push yourself, where you may need to back off. Now in an exercise like this, it's not front loaded. We're loading the side. So it's a little easier for us to maintain abdominal control and pelvic floor control. So in a case like this, yeah, let's really work that hip. Let's challenge ourselves. We can do, you know, I would do this series pre-pregnancy as well. Now, if we get to something like planks or push-up work, that's where it's like, okay, not trying to be a hero here. Let's really monitor how we're managing pressure and let's back it off a bit during pregnancy if needed. All right, add in the bottom heel. As you clamshell open, that bottom heel lifts up. Exhale, push the heels together, peel open. So my bottom knee is staying on the ground, my left knee is staying on the ground, it's just the left heel, so I'm externally rotating in this bottom hip joint. We already really worked that bottom hip, so it is talking to me after just a few reps. Exhale. In three, we're gonna hold lifted. Two, you're gonna hold that heel lifted, pressing the heels together, just clamshell with that top leg. Woo, keep pushing the heel up, don't collapse into the bottom side body, give me eight. Seven, six, five, four, you can do it, keep lifting the heel, three, Two, one, lower it down. We're gonna go into that abduction. So no more rotation. Now the top leg lifts and lowers. Now as it lifts, make sure you're not lifting by collapsing into the side body. So we stay lifted. 
Now, as we go through this, I know I just gave that whole spiel about how you can still push yourself, especially in certain areas when doing prenatal Pilates classes, but that always comes with a caveat that every pregnancy is different. We need to listen to our bodies. Anything feels off, not feeling right, you stop. And if you feel like you're not managing pressure well, you're feeling pressure down on your pelvic floor, you're seeing bulging, dial it down, back it off. We don't wanna do more harm than good, right? So we're gonna add in the bottom leg. It's going to be that lift into a modified side plank. You may need to adjust your alignment. So you want your hips back a little bit, knees and elbows kind of in line. Let's add it in. So as the top leg abducts, we lift those hips up and at forward into our modified side plank. Exhale, connect to the core, then lift. It's not about speed, okay? Never about speed in these Pilates classes. It's about linking movement to breath to really feel that connection to our core. And as we progress into pregnancy, feeling that connection to our core can get harder and harder. And that is okay. When you lose that connection, that's when you dial it down. Twice more and then you're gonna hold at the top. Next time you come up into that modified side plank, you hold, hips up and forward, push, 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 top leg lifts and lowers for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lower the hips down. So we're gonna come all the way down onto our side body now. You can rest your head in your hand or you can reach this arm long if that's more comfortable, do what works for you. And we're gonna bring our body into one long line. So heels, hips, shoulders aligned, top fingertips content. If you wanna give yourself a little more support, hop that bottom leg forward like six inches to a foot. Top leg lifts, hand lowers, lifts, hand lowers. We're getting there. <laughs> Now we're using our top fingertips for support, but I want you to make sure you're not rolling forward with the shoulder. So we're gonna stay open through the chest. Think length through the leg, lengthen up. And if you really, I almost picture someone is standing at my feet, gently pulling my leg away from the hips. And that lengthening, that creates length throughout the rest of the body as well. Staying connected to our bottom side obliques. We're not crunching into the top side waist. Again, length. We're gonna hold this leg at a hover. We're gonna do internal to external rotation within the hip joint. May feel a little weird, may feel like you're not quite getting it. And that's okay, it is a little bit of a weird movement. In four, three, Two, next time that leg is at a hover, hold it, and we're gonna internally to externally rotate. So the rotation is happening up here. So head of your thigh bone rotating within the hip joint. Might feel so tiny, like barely anything's happening. Knee kind of rotates towards the ground, slightly up to the ceiling. Same thing we were talking about with clamshell. It is the leg moving within the hip joint. We're not moving the hips. So you're not rocking forward and back. Keep right hip stacked on top of left. And just move that leg within it. We'll hold external rotation, which means top of foot towards the ceiling slightly. It's certainly not going all the way to the ceiling for me. And we'll go back to that lift and lower. Because we're externally rotated, it'll be kind of at a diagonal up and out. Next time you find that external rotation, hold an external rotation, really wrap that thigh out, flex to lower, point to lift. If you need the stability, hop your bottom leg forward, okay? Like a kickstand, it'll help. Definitely use your top fingertips. Try not to lose that external rotation, so think of keep wrapping that thigh outward. We'll bend the knee, 
bringing it into that sort of tree pose, but still maintaining that external rotation in four, three, two, one, lower, pointed to the ankle, bend the knee, slide the foot at the inside of the shin. So we're in this tree pose position, you can be pointed through both ankles. Exhale, whole shape lifts, inhale, lower. Lift on the exhale, so exhale, brace, have that control, little lift. For four, we finish with a hold in three, two, one, hold it. Reach long, breathe, open through the chest. Here, done with side body work in four, three, two, and one, bend the knees down. You're gonna press up using your hands for support. And let's take a counter stretch first for that left shoulder, left arm sweeps up and over. And then for the right hip, so you can swing your legs around. Counter stretch the other way, kind of leaning into that hip. Woo! Okay, so we are going to finish up with a little bit of modified push-up work. How modified is gonna be up to you. You're gonna really listen to your body. If you notice, like I've said many times throughout class, pressure down on your pelvic floor, pressure out, or you see any doming too much, we gotta back it up. So the breath pattern we're gonna do for these push-ups to make sure that we are secured and safe as we do it is we're gonna, at the top, we're gonna to inhale. At the top still, we're gonna start our exhale. Once you have that brace, down and up, okay? So it's inhale at the top, exhale, down and up, okay? All right, so let's try it. Another option is you can always elevate your hands on a coffee table or a bench. You can still do it on your knees, just hands elevated. And that is helpful, especially as you progress in your pregnancy and your bump gets bigger and bigger and it kind of gets in the way, okay? So level one, you can do this in tabletop and it would just be a little push up like that. If you wanna come to a full modified kneeling plank though, with hands spread out under shoulders, you're gonna walk the knees back lowering the hips, engage through the glutes. So from knees to crown of head is one diagonal line. We're gonna do four push-ups using that breath pattern. So inhale at the top. Exhale, lift to the pelvic floor, brace to the abdominal wall. Once you have that brace, fire through the glutes, one push-up down and up. Pause at the top for your inhale, relax. Exhale, pelvic floor lifts, brace to the core, fire through the glutes, push-up number two. Pause at the top, inhale. Exhale. Breathe out, feel the brace, down and up. Stay for the inhale, last time. Exhale, lift to the pelvic floor, feel the brace, fire through the glutes, down and up. Send your bum back to your heels. You can roll out the wrists, open up through the shoulders. So how did that feel? Gauge, was that too much? Walk it into tabletop or elevate your hands on a bench. Are you feeling good? Maybe you're just newly in your pregnancy or you're advanced. You can do it from your feet still if you can maintain that abdominal control, okay? And that is a big if. Okay, so we're gonna do that one more time. Another option, if you're feeling good, you wanna make it harder, inhale down, exhale up. It's all about maintaining pressure and everyone's going to be different where they are with that. Okay, let's come forward. Hands spread out under shoulders, open through the chest. You can be in modified plank or tabletop. Elbows are gonna go back at a 45 degree angle. Inhale, exhale. Lift and brace, one push-up. Stay for your inhale. Exhale, move it. Stay for your inhale. Exhale, feel the connection, give me a rep. Stay for an inhale. Exhale, give me a rep. And send it back, bum to heels. You can open up through the chest, you can roll out through the wrists. All right, let's do it one more time. And I know I'm really slowing it down, but when we're doing front loaded core work like this, we gotta make sure that we are doing it correct, okay? Again, don't wanna cause more harm than good. Let's come forward. You can find tabletop if that helps you feel more supported and just give me a little push up. Inhale, exhale, move it. Stay for your inhale. Exhale, feel the connection, give me a rep. 
Stay for an inhale. Exhale, lift the pelvic floor, brace the abdominal wall, fire through the glutes, elbows back and straight. And last time, inhale. Exhale. Feel that core connection. Maintain it as you go down and up. And then from here, I want you to come up into a full kneel. I'm going to turn to face you. We're going to cool it down. I want you to take your right foot. I want you to step it out at a 45 degree angle. So we're in this open lunge position. And I just want you to lunge to the side and up, over and up. Awesome job today. Next time you go over, I want you to hold it over. Now, maybe you bring your right hand to the thigh. Maybe it's comfortable com to come down on the forearm. And we're gonna side bend, reaching this left arm up and over. We're gonna start to trace an arm circle. Maybe you stay here with just the arm circling within the shoulder joint. Maybe it feels good to add in a little rotation of the spine along with the circling of the arm. Three, two, and one, come to kneel and let's take it over to the other side. Left foot steps up and out. Start by just lunging over to the side and up. Next time you lunge to the side, you're gonna hold. We're gonna come into a side bend only as deep as is comfortable for you. So maybe it's here, maybe it's here. And then we're gonna start to circle the arm. Maybe it feels good to add that rotation of the spine. Maybe you just stick with the arm circling. Three, two, and one. So let's come to kneel or if it's more comfortable, let's come to seated. Come to a cross-legged position. Hands on knees, start with just some shoulder circles open. Always feels nice after push-ups. Then we're just gonna settle into this with a moment of stillness. So one more shoulder roll open and then relax. We're sitting up tall. If you'd like to close your eyes, you can. We're not gonna overthink the breath here, but we are gonna tune into it. Maybe do a little scan, check in with how your body feels after that. You can stay here for as long as you'd like. Sometimes I like to follow up a Pilates class with a little bit of meditation. Whatever works for you. If you are done though, you can flutter your eyes open. Awesome work today. Thank you for moving with me. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Now, I don't want to label these classes either first or second trimester Pilates or third trimester Pilates because every pregnancy is so different. And it's not so much that certain exercises are okay in this trimester or not that trimester. It's more, it varies person to person and it's just what you can control. Okay, as soon as you start to lose control of that abdominal pressure, then that exercise becomes something that you would no longer want to do, but that's different for everyone. However, I am going to share these prenatal Pilates classes in chronological order as I gradually get more and more pregnant. So right now I'm 16 weeks today and the order I post these on my YouTube channel will progress like that. So if you do wanna follow along that way, you absolutely can. All right, again, thanks for choosing to move with me today and I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.